there's a famous saying about death and taxes. Some people like to plan so far ahead into the future that they know exactly where they'll be buried, what their headstone will say, and what the snacks will look like after the service. Others prefer to put death on the back burner. One thing remains certain, we will all end up in a grave of some sort eventually. In some parts of the world, it'll be marked with a headstone, including a name, birth date, and date of death. Depending on your culture and its norms and traditions, it'll have an epithet, inscription, or riddle. But some people prefer more complex and memorable graves, whether for their departed loved ones or themselves. And while some of them are pretty stunning, some can be strange, eccentric, and downright creepy. I'm Mike with List 25, and these are 25 of the strangest and most unusual graves in the world. But before we begin, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss out on any new content really helps out the channel. I mean it, it really does. Helps the algorithm, helps gets our videos to more eyes. So thank you guys so much. Um, I do that at the end, but anyway, <laughs> with that being said, let's go. Twenty-five, the Wood Plumpton Witch. Not all graves are elaborate or romantic monuments. We decided to kick off today's list with one cruelly memorialized and born from distrust. Meg Shelton, a 17th century maid who earned a local reputation for witchcraft and deception, lies in the grave of the Wood Plumpton Witch. She is supposed to have caused cattle illnesses, agricultural failures, turned herself into animals, and committed various other evil acts, in the process earning her the moniker, the Filed Hag. Meg died horribly, slammed against a wall by a barrel. While Meg is buried in a consecrated ground, which is unusual for a woman branded a witch, she is buried upside down in what is known as a deviant burial. According to folklore, villagers buried her, only for her to repeatedly claw herself out of her grave. This resulted in Meg's reburial, head first, underneath a massive boulder. 24. Love Struck in the Afterlife you will hear about the beautiful graves in France's Père Lachaise Cemetery in more than one item on our list today. Fernand Arbelo, an actor and pianist who died in 1942, has one such beautiful gravestone at the world-famous cemetery. Little is known about Arbelo, although it is believed that the face his bronze statue is clutching is that of his wife, whom he wished to look at for all eternity. Clearly, some of us want to be together even after death. 23. Russia's City of the Dead Russia's City of the Dead lies within the Caucasus Mountains. It comprises a collection of peaked rooftops and single-windowed brick structures surrounded by scenic fields and tumbling clifftops. The City of the Dead, formerly known as the Village of Dargovs, is home to 10,000 graves. There are several theories as to how the city came to be. One holds that afflicted residents secluded themselves in single-window brick dwellings during a plague and waited for death. Another is that after the 13th century Mongol Tatar invasion, inhabitants living in the Caucasus mountain valley began creating house-like above-ground tombs to preserve space. According to a third theory, the City of the Dead was built by nomadic Sumatians, who established themselves in southern Russia and interred their dead above the ground following Indo-Iranian tradition. 22. The Cadaver Tombs The cadaver tombs of Europe, held behind the walls of numerous cathedrals and estates, are ancient, strange, and unsettling. Cadaver tombs were built in the rich tradition of memento mori, a reminder that you will die. Cadaver tombs often take this reminder too literally and depict a life-size representation of the deceased clothed or draped in appropriate garments. The decomposing corpse of the deceased lays beneath this statue. Obviously, these massive tombs were only for the extremely affluent and influential. The two resident cadaver graves in Winchester portray Richard Fox and Stephen Gardiner, respectively. Both served as Bishop of Winchester in the 16th century and are now placed behind bars in the Presbytery to keep curious tourists' hands from wandering. 21. The Black Angel of Oakland Cemetery The Oakland Cemetery's Black Angel sits atop a gravestone that reads Rodina Feldovertova, which means the Feldovert family, in Czech, and guards the remains of Teresa and Nicholas Feldovert, as well as Teresa's son, Eddie DeLiesel. At over 13 feet tall, the statue commands attention. One winged arm is spread to the right, and the angel's head is slumped down, peering down at the tomb below. It finds itself in a worthy spot on today's list, as it's rumored to haunt the cemetery. In fact, the Black Angel has been said to have the power to kill anyone who kisses, or in some cases, touches it. 
The bronze statue has also been reported to have turned black overnight for various reasons, ranging from a lightning strike to an indication of its owner's infidelity. In any event, the Black Angel statue's shadow is a genuinely terrifying monument. 20. The Artist's Assistant and His Colorful Cat One very colorful creature can be found among the Victorian graves and granite tombstones of Paris's Montparnasse Cemetery. One particular gravestone, known as Ricardo's Cat, stands about 5 feet or 1.5 meters tall and is adorned with mosaic tiles. Nikki de saint created the odd headstone for her assistant, Ricardo Menon, who died in 1989 at the age of 37. The epitaph at the cat's feet reads, To our friend Ricardo, who died too soon, beautiful, young, and loved. 19. A Home in the Cemetery Jonathan Reed and his wife's Brooklyn tomb is worthy of a place on our list. When Jonathan's wife Mary died, he was devastated and moved into the vault that held his wife, where he stayed until his own death ten years later. Jonathan added an empty casket, for himself in the future, furniture, a wood stove, paintings, and other items. During his first year in the tomb, approximately 7,000 individuals came to pay him a visit, and he could often be seen speaking to Mary. Caretakers found him in 1905 with his arms still outstretched towards his wife's grave. 18. The Baby Trees the remains of the youngest casualties in the Tanataraja territory on an island in Indonesia are laid to rest in a special burial tree. Known as baby trees, it's been used as the final resting place for infants for ages. But there is an age limit. Should a baby die before it starts teething, the mother wraps the child in a cloth and carves a hole in the tree. The baby is then placed inside the hole and it's sealed off. It's believed that the tree absorbs the infant as it heals. It may seem morbid, but it's actually quite beautiful. 17. A Grave for a Hungarian Heroine Katalin Karadi was a 1940s Hungarian film star celebrated for her heroic efforts to save Hungarian Jews during World War II. Even going so far as to hide children in her home, she was captured in prison for three months in 1944 on suspicion of being an Allied spy. After the war, she traveled the world and finally settled in New York, where she opened a hat store. After her death, her remains were taken back to Hungary. Her grave in Budapest's Farkasreti Cemetery bears a massive and finely carved sculpture resembling a melting candle with a copy of her signature inscribed at its base. Katalin's tomb has become a pilgrimage site for those wishing to pay tribute to the beautiful star's bravery. 16. A Rocky Grave William Jeffries was only 28 years old when he was elected to the North Carolina Senate in 1844. When he developed a fever approximately a year later, his term had just kicked off to a strong start. During his sickness, he hallucinated and developed a phobia of being buried and eaten by worms. As a result, he told everybody who paid attention that he wished to be buried in a rock. No one initially took him seriously because he was young, enthusiastic, and expected to recover from his fever. But as the days passed, Jeffrey's health deteriorated, raising concerns about his life, and his father succumbed to his burial request. A stonemason worked on the rock for nearly a year. He also made a marble slab with an inscription in his memory. Unfortunately, the slab was damaged during shipping. It would be another year before the tomb was finished. 15. Inez Clark Monument The Inez Clark Monument is an unusual and eerie memorial with very mysterious origins. A statue of a young girl on a pedestal holding her parasol wouldn't ordinarily seem particularly creepy. However, this particular girl is encased in glass and is rumored to be haunted. It's said that she comes to life whenever there's stormy weather and that she wanders the cemetery until the storms blow over. Security guards and bus tour drivers have all claimed that the statue disappears at night before returning to its rightful spot in the morning. However, there's another mystery surrounding the monument. Who's buried there? Although the inscription states, Inez Clark, 1873-1880, to Helen Sinclair, a Chicago cemetery specialist and authority in the field, previously noted that a boy called Amos Briggs was buried there, deepening the mystery. 14. Andy Warhol's Multifaceted Grave At first sight, Andy Warhol's grave in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania appears to be a standard gravestone. However, Warhol's grave is live stream on the internet 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. The continuous broadcasting of his grave began in 2013 to commemorate his 85th birthday. The live stream is part of the Figment Art Project. It was named after the artist who once said he'd like his tombstone to remain blank, or actually to say Figment. 
Webcam viewers can view the headstone at any time, day or night, rain or shine. Viewers can also look at the grave with a pop art filter, giving it Warhol's trademark vibrant look. In celebration of his iconic artwork, Campbell's Soup Cans, you can also pay to send a can of soup to his tomb, with all proceeds benefiting the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. 13. The Girl in the Shadow Box The Lutis family plot at Bellefontaine Cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri is marked by a hauntingly beautiful headstone. Also known as The Girl in the Shadow Box, Herman Lutiez commissioned the beautiful monument after falling deeply in love with the sculptor's muse, an Italian model, while in Europe. Although she denied his marriage proposal, he had the statue of her moved to St. Louis and kept it in his home. It was eventually relocated to the family burial place in Bellefontaine Cemetery, where Herman erected a glass casing to safeguard his beloved from the elements. He died in 1921 at the age of 50 and was buried at her feet. 12. William Mackenzie's Pyramid in the heart of Liverpool, just a few streets away from the bustling Commerce District, stands a 15-foot-high pyramid. Although you might think it, it's not the final resting place of an Egyptian dignitary, but that of a Victorian gambler. The stories about the inhabitants of the Liverpool Pyramid are mixed and diverse. Before his death, William Mackenzie gave precise orders that he be buried seated at a card table holding a winning hand. However, many people believe Mackenzie was not placed below the ground, but left above with his winning hand to prevent Satan from stealing his soul. Whichever way his remains were left, a hunched poker playing corpse inside a pyramid seems a lot more entertaining than a body in a coffin. 11. The Star-Crossed Lovers Colonel Van Horkum and Lady Van Efferden's graves still hold hands over 150 years after their deaths. Lady Van Efferden was a noble Catholic, whereas the Colonel was a Protestant and a commoner when they married in 1842. Colonel Van Horkum died in 1880 and was buried in Roermond's Protestant Cemetery. Knowing that she would be buried at a Catholic cemetery after her death, the lady stated unequivocally that she wasn't interested in being buried in her family's plot. Instead, she chose a gravesite near the wall separating the two cemeteries as close to her husband's grave as possible. Two hands meet each other over the wall above their headstones, proving that acts of love can continue after we're gone. 10. Victim of the Beast 666 It's not every day that you come across a headstone claiming that its owner was a victim of the beast, 666. Many people are curious about Lily Edith's grave in Ontario, Canada, and wonder what exactly happened to this unfortunate soul. The internet's most probable explanation for the epitaph's meaning is that it came from her husband, Elmer Lewis Gray's unstable mind, as he presumably procured the stone and was rumored to be a bit off at times. That or we or our lives because she prevented what was about to happen to the rest of the world. So. 9. A Dancer's Oriental Carpet Rudolf Nureyev, popularly known as Lord of the Dance, was a legendary dancer and the partner of British ballerina Dame Margot Fontaine. Nureyev, regarded as one of the most gifted dancers in living memory, died of heart complications in 1993. In his final years, he was the director and head choreographer of the Paris Opera Ballet. Nureyev was a connoisseur of beautiful carpets and tapestries and was buried wearing ballet shoes. His unique gravestone was made to look like a decadent oriental carpet. If you look closely, you'll see that the carpet is actually made of little colorful mosaic tiles, the drapes and folds meticulously sculpted to create the beautiful effect. 8. Jay's Grave Devonians have been perplexed by Jay's Grave, a very unassuming grass mound, for years. The grave is believed to be the resting place of a late 1700s suicide victim, and it has become a popular site for ghost hunters. Kitty J was refused a church grave on consecrated ground because of her religion-led humiliation towards suicide in the 18th century. Instead, she was buried at a crossroads so that her ghost would remain confused and never be able to find its way to the hereafter. Someone in the area does seem to have pity for Kitty, since fresh flowers are frequently placed on her grave. Despite countless paranormal and other inquiries, no one has ever claimed responsibility for the frequent floral tributes. 7. A Burial Facing the Sky The Blue Sky Mausoleum can be seen at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Buffalo, New York. It was designed by revolutionary American architect Frank Lloyd Wright in honor of his close friend Darwin D. Martin. The two friends had detailed discussions about the unusual mausoleum between 1925 and 1928, but it wouldn't be finalized during either of their lives. In 2004, architect Anthony Putnam, a former apprentice of Wright's, collaborated with Forest Lawn Cemetery to make the two friends' idea a reality. 
The design is based on comprehensive plans and blueprints by Wright, and the text was adopted as an epitaph from his message to Martin. A burial facing the open sky, the whole could not fail of noble effect. 6. The Grave That Continues to Grow One grave in Samarkand, Uzbekistan has grown to incredible proportions over hundreds of years. It's believed to be the final resting place of the Old Testament prophet Daniel, and local legend has it that his remains grew after death, resulting in a tomb that is now over 59 feet or 18 meters long. Timur, the Turko-Mongol leader who conquered Persia and Central Asia, is said to have placed Daniel's remains at Samarkand for good luck. The reasoning behind the growing grave is that Timur became concerned about grave robbers and expanded the tomb to make it more difficult for them to steal the priceless human remains. 5. The Grave of Florence Irene Ford Florence Irene Ford died of yellow fever at age 10 in 1871 and was laid to rest at the Natchez City Cemetery in Adams County, Mississippi. Throughout her young life, she was terrified of storms and would run to her mother for comfort whenever one picked up. After her death, her mother requested that her tomb include a little glass panel at her daughter's head. A, a touch creepy, but not too out of the ordinary. However, her mother then ordered the buried casket to be accessible through a stairway extending down approximately six feet or two meters. Her mother also had a metal trap door placed at the top of the stairs so that she could close it during a storm and sit by her daughter singing or reading to her until the storm passed. That's, hmm, that one kind of got to me. Oh man, <laughs> it's kind of adorable, damn. Oh, wow. Four, tragedy and romance in Paris. There are hundreds of beautiful tombs at Le Père Lachaise, but one that will always stand out is the dramatic final resting place of Georges Rodenbach, a little known writer and poet. Rodenbach is perhaps best known for his novel Bruges Le Monde, which tells the melancholy story of a widower who travels the streets of Bruges, struggling to come to terms with the death of his wife when he spots a woman who looks exactly like her. The novel is noteworthy because it was the first time photographs were included in a work of fiction. Rodenbach's grave has a sculpture of him emerging from a big slab of rough cut granite. His tomb symbolizes how even the grave cannot contain his spirit. Seemingly mocking death, he definitely holds a single flower in his hand. Three, the get rich quick grave. Elizabeth Demidov was the descendant of a Russian family that made their fortune in salt and fur. She married the Russian Count Nikolai Nikitish Demidov, heir to an industrialist fortune. Sadly, the marriage ended in divorce. After that, Elizabeth moved to Paris, where she died in 1818 at the age of 40. While her life may not have been noteworthy, her dying request was a little creepy. According to legend, after her death, her relatives were astonished to learn that her will included a stipulation leaving millions of francs to anyone willing to spend a year and a day sitting beside her coffin in Paris's Père Lachaise Cemetery. Several people have attempted the feat to get rich quick, but no one has ever succeeded, despite requests continuing into the 1900s. I'll do it. How long do we do it again? Oh, a year and a day? Oh, a year. Oh man, will people bring me food? Do I get shelter if it rains? I'll do it. Two, Peter the Wild Boy. Peter was a feral child in the woods near Hamelin, Germany. He was discovered by a hunting party of George I during a visit to his country and was brought back to the UK where he quickly became a court curiosity. He was placed in the care of court workers and given a living pension to help him survive, but he could never converse or fully integrate into the community. Peter couldn't walk, had severe developmental problems, and had to be wrestled into a suit every day at court and preferred sleeping in a corner of his room rather than in a bed. Following an attempted escape in 1751, he was given a leather collar with his name on it to identify him if he ever wandered too far away from the estate. He died at the age of 70 and was buried with a small basic tombstone on St. Mary's Church grounds. Despite its small stature, Peter's grave is a constant reminder of the positive shift in views towards the disabled and those in need. 1. The Tomb of Cyrus the Great Pasar Gad, founded in the 6th century BCE in the Persian heartland, today's province of Fars in southwestern Iran, was the first capital of the Archimended First Persian Empire. Cyrus the Great established the city, and his grandiose tomb would eventually be built within the city, among the beautiful royal gardens. 
It's the only grave on today's list that is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is over 42 and a half feet long and 36 feet tall and includes the actual grave, a square room and an attic. According to legend, the grave was once visited by Alexander the Great when he had the tomb renovated in Cyrus's honor. When Cyrus the Great was laid to rest, his grave held an elaborate golden sarcophagus, weapons, jewelry, and cloak. Despite countless centuries passing, the tomb is still a magnificent monument, and its age, size, and distinctive architectural style place it firmly at the number one spot on today's list. So, have you ever visited any of these graves? What do you want yours to look like? I know it's a little morbid, but this entire topic was morbid. How would you design your gravestone? or mausoleum, or a lot of them weren't just gravestones. So you, you get to be a designer today. Tell me what you would do. Let us know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, click that notification bell, join our Discord, do all that fun stuff. Thank you guys so much. We could not do this without you. I love you all. And as always, I'll see you next time. Be sure to click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Share them with your friends and help us consistently conciliate curiosity. And if you want even more lists, check out these videos here or just head to our website at list25.com.